Hey guys, what's going on? Scott here from phasingplayer.com. I, uh, been wanting to play this game for a little bit, to be honest. Uh, Roads and Boats, as you might see behind me, is, uh, what I've been wanting to play. I, uh, couldn't find a wet erase marker, which is why I ended up having to go up a couple minutes late. What time is it right now? Oh, it's only 2.04. Not bad. Uh, anyway, hey, welcome. If you are, uh, if you're joining me live right now, which I see we have a handful of people here. Uh, I am really excited actually to play this. It's um, Roads and Boats uh, has a really good solitaire game. And I think that's because it's not that much different from the regular game. Uh, in fact, the only rule change in the solitaire game I use in all of my multiplayer games too. Uh, if you're not familiar with Roads and Boats, I'll explain it a little bit. But, uh, oh, Dan, I did not realize you'd never, um, you'd never played Roads and Boats. I guess, so Roads and Boats is weird. It's, uh, it is an old game. Hold on one second. <laughs> I have a, I have a handy squirt bottle with me, uh, today. When I'm home by myself, I think I've said this basically every time I've done a live stream. Uh, whenever I do, like, stuff where I'm, like, narrating things to a camera in this case... I, uh, my cats get a little wild. Uh, they were not, not five minutes ago. They were knocked out cold on the couch. And, uh, of course I start talking and they both get up and start wrestling around. So I have a squirt bottle here. If you see me kind of turning and hear, hear a funny noise, it's me squirting my cats. So I don't have to, uh, go prime apart. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're off to a really good start on this, uh, Tuesday afternoon. Um, anyway, anyway, so roads and boats. Uh, it is one of Splatterspellin's oldest games. They are most well known now for Food Chain Magnate, but they also have a lot of accolades with stuff like Indonesia, The Great Zimbabwe, uh, Bus that Capstone just put out, also an old Splatter game. Roads and Boats, though, is uh, it, it was kind of a behemoth. It's you can see the box behind me over here. It's uh, it's very big. It is a large, large box. I have it weighted down right now so it doesn't fall forward, but. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this game. It's got like tiles to make a map. It's got, I think, like 2,000 little counters and a bunch of wooden pieces. It's kind of a, a wild game. The funny thing is you're only going to use like a third of it whenever you play. Not necessarily because it's so varied, but because they give you enough components, I think, to fill out like a six-player game. And most of the time I play this at like two and three. Uh, so I feel like it's got a ton of components that I don't use most of the time, but it's kind of fun that they're there. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here. If you guys don't know what Roads and Boats is, it is a logistics game. It is about getting points by maximizing efficiency, and that's basically it. It's actually pretty darn simple uh, mechanically. Uh, why don't we switch to the map I have set up here so you can kind of get an idea if you're unfamiliar. Uh, this is the map, and as you can see, it's pretty small, right? Uh, here are my hands. Uh, I do not have very big hands, so you can see about how much space this is going to take up. Not very much at all. Uh, this is the solitaire game. With, with larger player counts, you'll end up with bigger maps. But uh, in the solitaire game, it's only, what, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 tiles? That's, that's very few. Uh, but but it, that's kind of cool, right? It takes up a pretty small spot on your table. And the solitaire game plays pretty darn fast as well. So this might be a quick stream. And it, maybe if I'm feeling... If feeling a little uh, a little hyped up, I'll I'll run it back and try to get a better score. But anyway, so what I'm going to be doing is moving my little transports around, which are these little donkeys right now. Though they can become they can become things other than donkeys later. I don't know they will this game, but right now they're donkeys. And I'm going to be carrying around goods like these boards, or this uh, this brick, and I'm going to carry it to different tiles, and I'm going to be building stuff with those. Now, this is a little cheat sheet that I have printed out off the internet, which I highly recommend anyone playing Roads and Boats use this cheat sheet. It's very helpful. And I know it looks like a lot, but it's actually, it's, it's reasonably straightforward and easy to read once you know how to read it. But basically, these are all the things that I can build in the game, and they will all cost a combination of uh, boards and bricks. What I want to do, ultimately, is make... And this is maybe kind of weird, but what I want to do is make uh, gold nuggets from a mine shaft, which are going to be these cylinders. These wooden cylinders are mine shafts. 
and then I want to turn those gold nuggets into gold coins in a mint, which is going to be, I don't know how you're going to be able to see this up here, but it's this little, uh, this little square with three gold circles on it. And then I want to transfer those gold coins into stocks at the stock exchange. They're worth increasingly greater points. So gold is worth 10, coins are worth 40, and stocks are worth 120. And those are the primary sources of points in the game. So really, this is all about resource conversion. I'm trying to turn bricks and boards into, uh, you know, different buildings that will produce different goods that will then ultimately let me make stocks. Okay, so this whole thing is about making stocks. In a multiplayer game, you're going to be competing against other players to see who can have like the most efficient system, the most efficient engine and network in order to make the most stocks and coins and gold uh, nuggets. In the solitaire game, I'm only playing against myself. So what I'm trying to do is just really make the most efficient puzzle or assault, make the most efficient solution to a puzzle as I can in a limited amount of time. In the multiplayer game, we've only got 20 turns to make as many points as possible. Okay, that is going to be dictated by this little track here. This is the uh, the wonder, is what it's called. The theme of the game, <laughs> the theme of the game is like we're all living in this world, doing this fun, cool guy stuff, and also we are building this great wonder to I don't know to a god or just to as a monument to our civilization we've all created. And so every turn we have the option of building into this wonder with these bricks in our player color. It costs resources to do that. Any resource can do it. I can stick geese feathers in there. I can stick uh, stone in there. I can stick combinations of those things. It makes no difference. But having bricks in here is the turn tracker and also is another source of points. In the solitaire game, like I said, we've only got 20 turns. The game has these white bricks. There are 20 of them here. And when I've placed the 20th one, the game ends immediately and I will calculate my score. Uh, that is kind of the, the trick of the solitaire game, is you know exactly how many turns you have. There's no randomness in this game, uh, so you know where, I, where I, I know where I start. I know what it costs to build stuff. I know exactly how everything is going to go, so it is purely an efficiency puzzle in the solitaire game. In the multiplayer game, other players can come kind of mess with your territory a little bit and, and slow you down or screw you up, uh, but not in the solitaire game because it's just me. Uh, I will kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it, but I'm not going to give like a full rules explanation here. Broadly speaking, the game is going to go through uh, a few different phases, uh, four different phases per turn. The first one is going to be production, which is sort of automated. Certain goods are going to populate, or certain, uh, certain buildings rather, are going to populate types of goods automatically. Uh, animals will breed automatically, that sort of thing. It's all pretty procedural. The main two phases of the game are movement and uh, building. In movement, I will do exactly as you'd expect. I'd move my dudes around. And then in the building phase, those transporters will build stuff with the combination of goods uh, that the building they're making requires. Finally, there's the wonder phase, which is where I can add stuff to, hit to, uh, to this wonder, and then the game will add one after me. And then we just do that over and over again until all 20 of these have been placed into the wonder. Uh, this game really benefits from thinking ahead and planning your turns out and taking notes, which is one use of this pen. Uh, I have done a little bit of that. I'm not great at this game, but I will do the best of that I can. I think the most points I've gotten in this solitaire game is in, uh, in this map. There are different maps. I think I've gotten like 140 before. Uh, the, the What does it say here? The game comes with this little scenario booklet. Uh, it says for a river runs through it, which is the map that I've got here. The, 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 the highest score is 300, and it says there are many ways to get as high as 260, uh, which I have certainly not, certainly not gotten to, but you know, why don't we write over here, uh, our goal is 260, and the record is 300. Okay, so we're aiming for 260. If we're really ambitious, we'll try to get to 300. My personal record, like I said, is like 140. So these are very both very lofty ambitions. Uh, a cool thing about this game, as you might have noticed, 
is you draw on stuff with this pen. That's why I've got this here. But the whole game I have covered in this, uh, this piece of acrylic. It's actually a poster board that I, uh, I picked up, I think, at Michael's, like a cheap poster frame, and, and I pulled this out. Uh, it's, a nice, it's a small size. It's, it's nice for solitaire setups like this. But the game is called Roads and Boats. So part of this logistics, logistics network is going to be making roads. And to do that, I'm going to draw lines in between tiles to signify that there's a road there. And that'll increase the movement value of my transports. So there's this fun little drawing mechanic, too. Write my, uh, my PB as well. Oh, uh, what do you mean write my PB? I'm, I'm blanking on what that means. Uh, anyway, um, so yes, uh, that is broadly what I'm doing, moving guys around, building things, trying to get stocks. We'll see if that works. Again, I'll explain more as I go along, but broadly that's the game. So why don't we start? Uh, the first thing we have to do is the production phase, but... We don't do that in the first turn because there's nothing to produce. So we can basically just go right through the production phase on turn one. Then we need to move stuff. Uh, personal best, of course. Thank you. Uh, my personal best record, uh, we'll say, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with PB. We'll say PB is 140. Uh, all right. And uh, then... <laughs> Speedrunner term, sure. I'm, I, uh, I have never gotten into the speedrunning scene for stuff. Uh, though I do watch speedruns. I certainly do uh, get onto YouTube and watch speedruns of different games and different things. Uh, but, so I'm apparently not good enough uh, to understand the lingo, but I, I appreciate it. Uh, anyway, so uh, then I have to move. The game starts you off with a certain number of resources. It's five wooden boards, one brick, and two geese. Those are exactly enough to build three core buildings. It'll let you build a quarry, which has to be built on stone, which is what this color is. That quarry will allow me to automatically produce more stone. It also has enough resources here to build a woodcutter, which has to be built in a forest, which are these dark green tiles. The woodcutter uh, will automatically produce logs which you might not be able to see from down there, but they are similar to boards, but they have little circles on them. And the logs are going to convert into boards when I take them to the sawmill, which is also a thing that I can build right now. The sawmill will convert boards, or one set of log logs into two uh, boards. So it's, it's a pretty efficient transfer. I'm doubling, um, we're going to go from one, one set of logs to two boards. Pretty good. So those three things are things I'm going, to, I'm going to need to build very quickly. In fact, I kind of have to build them, otherwise I will screw myself over and never be able to get more resources. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this donkey, and these donkeys have a transportation... transportation. Sorry, I can't speak right now. I have a bit of a, bit of a dry mouth. I've been drinking water all morning. I don't know why I'm so dry mouthed. But uh, these donkeys have a transportation range of one hex without a road. If there's a road, they have a transport range of two, and they can carry two goods, always can carry two goods. So this guy's going to go up to the stone, not crossing the river. I have to pay attention to what side of this river I'm on. I'm on the kind of outside over here. So I'm going to go up to here, and I am going to build a quarry, which costs me two pieces of wood, two, two boards. So he's going to carry those two boards up there. Then this donkey is going to go into this forest hex, carrying a single board, which is going to allow me to build a woodcutter. And now the last thing I'm going to need is a sawmill. But I need to think here. Sawmills don't require any type of tile. I can build them on the green pastures. I can build them in the mountains. I can't build anything here. I know it might be hard to differentiate the color on camera, but these two are yellow. They are deserts. You cannot build anything on deserts until you get up to this uh, point in the wonder, which then irrigates the deserts and they become pastures. You can get up here in the solitaire game if you really rush um, putting your own bricks in, okay? I'll kind of explain that when we get to the wonder phase, but no, right now I cannot build on these two tiles. And it's one building per tile. So I need to think where do I want to build my sawmill? I can build it here in my home tile, um, this little house here despite being about the same size and shape of the buildings, does not count as a building. It is simply something that notes where I'm starting the game. 
and uh, a couple of things requiring me to be at home. But I can still build another building here. So I could build my sawmill here uh, right now if I want to. Or I can build it down here if I'd prefer. I think I'm going to build it at home, but I'm not going to do that yet. I need to use these geese. Now, this is the most logical, down-to-earth, kind of realistic part of this game, and that's research. I have a handful of technologies I can research. Uh, they can get me better gold mines. They can get me better transports. Those are the two big ones, uh, but the, the technology is kind of what's going to focus your game into different, different strategies, right? And to do that, this is the realistic, down-to-earth, logical part of the game, you need geese, okay? In fact, you need two geese and a piece of paper. Because without geese and without paper, science doesn't exist. I don't need to say that to you. All of you understand that already. I know I'm being redundant. But that is represented in this game. I need two geese and I need a piece of paper and then I can research something. However, the only way to get more geese is to have the geese breed. And they will only breed, and this is true of donkeys as well, all animals in this game, which are only geese and donkeys, but it's true for both of them. They will only breed if they are alone in a pasture together. So if I have two donkeys all by themselves in a pasture in the production phase of the next round, they will breed and create a third donkey. That is also the case with geese. If I have geese in a tile, in a pasture, alone together, they will breed. When I say alone, I mean completely alone. If there is a wood board with them, they will not breed. If there's a third goose, they will not breed. It has to be exactly two of the same animal. And that is it. And then they will breed. So, uh... There's also, there's, there are a couple exceptions in this game. So a funny thing, too, is that geese will follow transports. They are goods. They can be carried, just like other goods. Or I can have them follow one of my transports. Remember, donkeys can only carry two things at a time. And so maybe this donkey wants to carry some boards, but I also want to transport these geese. So I can have this donkey go here with stuff and have the geese follow. That's fine. In the solitaire game, that's not super important. It might come up once or twice, but... Uh, in the multiplayer game, there's a whole good stealing thing, but that's that's not here. That's multiplayer. I'm just I might have geese follow things around later, so I want to mention it now. Anyway, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna have this donkey bring these geese either by carrying or just by leading into this pasture, and he's not gonna bring these goods. My reasoning is I want these geese to breed because I'm gonna want two technologies this game, which means I need four geese. I've only got two now, so I'm going to need them to breed. Uh, I plan on building my sawmill here in my home tile, and so my geese are going to breed down here. All right, so now all of my transports have moved. This guy moved one over here, this guy moved uh, one space up here, and this dude moved one down here with those two geese in tow. So now we're done with movement. Up next is building. So to build... You simply spend goods on a tile. They don't have to be carried. They just have to be on the tile you're building on. And you need a transport there. And you replace those goods with the building you're building. So going, I guess, top to bottom, I've got these two boards. And I'm on this stone. And looking at this sheet, I see a quarry costs two stone, needs to be on a rock, and I'll get a quarry for it. So get rid of these two boards. Set them aside. I'm going to be using them a ton. Boards and stone are the two most common things you use in a game. And put a quarry right there. Now, every turn in the production phase, a new stone will automatically populate there, and I can use it. I can carry it around. This is going to be my stone production facility. Down here, we're doing a similar thing. One set of boards is going to turn into a woodcutter. And then down here, this guy is not building anything. He doesn't have the resources to build a sawmill here. They're back here at home. And uh, so he's just going to hang out here with these geese. And now that is it for building. It's now the wonder phase. So I have the option to build stuff into this wonder. We go from the lower left most open space, which is this one. And we go to the right until we get to the next row. And we go up and up and up and up. And again, the game ends when the 20th tile is put in. The 20th game tile, these white ones, is put in. 
I have all these black tiles down here because in the solitaire game, you don't use those. You fill those up. Normally in a multiplayer game, you'd start at the very bottom and work your way up. Now, there are two things I need to keep in mind for putting stuff into the wonder. First of all, in a solitaire game, the cost begins here, which means it, it, this little like symbol that you might be able to sort of see on here, once you get to that point in the wonder, you have to spend two resources to put a single brick in. And you can put multiple bricks per turn, but it costs you that same two resources per brick, plus an additional one after the first. So it would be two goods to put a single brick in, and then an additional three goods to put a second brick in, and then an additional four goods, and so on and so on. Uh, if I want to do them in the same turn, which later on I might want to. But for right now, it would just cost me two to put a single one. The other requirement is I have to spend the resources from my home tile, and I have to have a transport there. I do have goods here, but I don't have a transport, so I cannot build anything into the Wonder this turn. So, once I'm done building stuff into the Wonder, the game will put one brick in. And so we are now 120th through this game of Roads and Boats. Which sucks, by the way, uh, for me. It is... This, this timer can really grind on you. I'll, I'll get down to the last few and I'll be so lost at what I should be doing right now to get more points. But right now, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to keep going with the little plan I have in my head. Uh, we'll see how it works. All right. So now we need to do the production phase. These two automatically populate in the production phase. So set of logs pops out right here. A brick pops out over there, and that is all that's going to happen in this production phase. Now it's back to movement. I'm going to move this donkey away from these geese so that they're alone in this tile, and in the next production phase, they're going to breed and create a third goose. This guy is going to carry this set of boards, I'm sorry, this set of logs, over to here uh, so that next turn it will convert into uh, into boards at the sawmill that I'll build here. And then this guy is actually going to stay uh, where he's at. And uh, you know what? No, he's not. He's, he's going to move down to here, back to the home tile, carrying... Uh, hmm, do I want to... No, you know what? He's going to stay. He's going to stay here. He's going to stay here because I'm going to use this brick to build a road to connect these two tiles. That's it for movement, and now it's time for building. I'm going to take these three resources, these uh, two boards and a brick, and I'm going to turn them into a sawmill to complete the trifecta that I mentioned earlier. A quarry, a woodcutter, and a sawmill. Now uh, I am going to build, in the building phase you also make roads, I'm going to use this one brick to make a road connecting this tile to this tile. I'm going to try to make these kind of bold lines so hopefully you guys can see them clearly. So now there's a road connecting these two tiles, which means these donkeys, when moving across roads, have two movement. And uh, that's going to be really important for making this network uh, more efficient and actually able to generate me points. And that's all my building. So now we go into the wonder phase. I do have guys in my home tile, but I've only got one good, and so I cannot afford to build any bricks. So the game is just going to put another brick in. All right, and now we're back to the start of the next turn. See, these turns can go pretty darn fast. Uh, so we're going to populate all this stuff. Put a set of logs here. Put a brick here. And now, because there are these logs in the same tile as this sawmill, it cuts up these logs into two boards. Uh, and because these two geese are all by themselves on a pasture, there's nothing else there, they are going to produce a third goose. So that's how we get more geese, and I'm going to want four of them because I'm intending to research two things. I guess I could say what those are. Uh, there are different research options under these glass beads. When you research them, you remove the bead. The two I'm going to go for this game are uh, an oil rig, which is going to be, I believe, this one. No, it's not that one. Uh, one of these. I think this one right here. Uh, an oil rig, which is going to allow me to make this 
out at sea. It's the only thing you can make at sea. And that, uh, that produces coal. Coal is required to turn gold nuggets into gold coins. And so I'm going to make that. So I'm going to need that technology. And I'm going to want to be able to replenish my mines. Mines make gold and iron. They'll make three of each. And once they're all done for, uh, they won't make any more. However, with this technology, I can restart the mine. And so I'm going to want both of those. Okay, so that's done with production. Now we're moving into uh, to movement. For movement, I'm going to have this guy carry. Hold on, cat's getting into it again. Give me one second here. Or hide it for me this time. All right, <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys uh, working with me here and having the patience for me to wrangle cats. Uh, I am going to, in the movement phase, have this guy move down to here, carrying this brick. I'm going to have this guy uh, carry these two boards down to here. Eh, do I want to carry both, or do I want to just carry one? Uh, let's, let's see. So for, for making a raft factory, I need a board and I need a brick. And I plan on doing those on this tile. So I'll carry a board down this way and I'll leave the other one here because this one's going to go up this way to make a mine. So I'm just going to carry this one down here. Uh, and I'm going to need to make another goose so there'll be a bit of back and forth here too. Uh, and then I, uh, you know what, hold on. I'm, I'm rethinking my strategy here. Maybe instead of bringing those down now because I'm going to need to usher another goose out of here so that these guys can breed again. So there's no sense in carrying something down right now. I think instead what I'm going to do is have this guy walk over here because he's going to get ready to pick up a couple logs to turn them into a raft. Okay, okay, I've got it. I've got it. I swear I have a, I have a loose plan and I'm sort of flying by the seat of my pants here. So uh, I'm carrying this. I'm going to have this guy move over here. This dude carry the brick down this way, and then this guy will on his own move down into here so we can usher a goose away. Next turn. All right, building time. I'm just going to make a road. Get rid of that brick and make a road. Uh, I'll do the road over here so that I can move these logs over to here a little qu more quickly. Okay, uh, and that is going to be it for movement. It's back to the wonder phase. I do have goods here that I could turn into a brick. And like I said, you do get points for filling out some of these rows. It is 10 points per row you have a brick in. So ideally, I'm going to get at least one brick in each of the rows uh, that we're doing as the game goes on. So let's see. Do I want to do that now? Because these two boards I want to use... I want to bring them down here for making a raft factory. Let's see. Because if I go down here and make a raft factory with these now, I mean, I still need to get this from up here all the way down. So you know what? All right. I bet this is going to be dumb. I bet I'm going to, someone is going to watch this. Uh, Garrick is already saying, if I don't have all 20 turns pre-planned, I'm a scrub. He's right, but that's why you do runbacks. That's why that's how you learn puzzles, right? So I planned four turns ahead. Next game, I'll plan five turns ahead, and then I'll plan six turns ahead. You know, every game you're going to add on, you're going to add on, and suddenly you have a nice loaf of sourdough bread like you do in a pandemic, and this will be my sourdough bread. It'll be beautiful. It'll be amazing. Uh, so let's have this guy... Spend these two boards to put a brick into the wonder. So I'm going to stick this right here. We're going to put the game's brick afterwards, and now we'll continue on. Time to populate. I'm populating, so there are, like some people say, you know, uh, what, what's the advantage of a board game over a video game? Um, you know, the, the tactile feel of it, the, like, the fact that you can kind of see how everything works. Uh, there are lots of little, little advantages in video games, or board games. Something that I think 
would help here uh, is, is a video game or a computer would do a great job of repopulating all this stuff. In a solitaire game, it's not that bad. In a multiplayer game, when there are like a billion things out, it can be so hard to remember what you've put down where. Uh, sometimes you'll end up being dead. Did I put another brick here? Because there are three already. Did I put a fourth or did, was the third? A, a, a computerized version of this would be very cool. Um, on tabletop simulator or something. It would be, be very neat. That's neither here nor there though, I guess. So uh, I've populated this. I've populated this. Nothing to chop up here. These geese don't breed. Back to the movement phase. This donk is going to go back to New Donk City. And he's going to bring that goose with him. This guy is going to carry uh, one of these logs. Let me think. Because I need two logs to make a raft. And I need a raft. I need two rafts in order to go out here and build an oil rig. So I'm going to need four logs to make a raft. But before that, I need boards to make the raft factory. So I will take one of these over. Uh, and I'll use those for something later. So then, uh, so one guy moved up this way. One guy went here. He's going to drop these off, and he's going to do a little dance. A dance that is kind of common in roads and boats. Uh, so I had this donkey. He was over here, right? He carried a set of logs to here, but you get two movement on roads. So his second movement is going to be up this road over to here, dropping off this log and route. So bing, bing, that's that one donkey. And then this last guy, uh, he will go over to here and grab these. Because I'm going to be preparing, I think I'm going to be preparing to bring them down here next turn. Okay, now it's time to build. And I'm going to build, I think, nothing. Because I want to take this brick down here for making my raft factory, so I don't want to make a road with it. And there's nothing else for me to build with the stuff that I have. So, back to the wonder phase. I do have enough goods here to make a wonder. I have a set of logs and I have a goose, but... I have other plans for those things, so I'm going to let the game put that brick in. I do have a brick in this row, which means I will get 10 points at the end of the game. If I had all these bricks and none of the, none were the games, I would still only get 10 points. So points-wise, I only need one brick per row. Now, back to the population phase. Let's go ahead, put this guy here. Pop that. Pop that. Convert the logs. Populate the goose. So now I have all my geese. I have all four geese. Uh, let's go ahead and do some movement. I will have this dude carry these two logs down here. Those geese don't need a breed, so I can successfully now, I can, I can safely build something here. I, I'm going to need paper, which I'm going to build here in a minute. A paper mill also costs one brick and one board. So I'll be, I'll be sending a donkey, probably this one, over this direction to make a paper mill. Uh, this guy has the goods for a raft. And we're going to also move some stuff over for the raft factory. So I think, I think I'm doing okay right now. Uh, this goose can stay right there. So this guy moved down to here. And he's just going to hang out. Uh, this dude up here is going to grab one of these and travel up this way. He'll also pick up another brick. This donkey is going to take this brick, travel down here, pick up this log. So these guys are kind of going in different directions with the same goods. Next turn, I'll be making stuff on both those tiles. Uh, all right, and that's it for movement. That's all the movement I'm doing. Uh, do I have any plans for playing multiplayer, roads and boats with, etc. on the channels, uh, Simon asks. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, well, okay. N no, I don't. Uh, I do not have any, like, plans right now. It's not in the calendar. I wanted to before COVID-19 happened. Uh, right now, though, unfortunately, uh, it's going to be really dependent on when Chicago starts to ease up on some of their shelter-at-home policies. Illinois, as a state, is starting to ease up, uh, I think, after May, so in the next few weeks or there are at least uh, our governor, uh, J.B. Pritzker, is going to be evaluating things and potentially easing up on some sanctions. We have like a plan in place. Uh, Chicago is not using that plan directly. We have our own like five-star plan. And so when we're at a point uh, as, as a city where it's 
we not only as a city but our friend group that are my friend group that plays plays these games um when they feel safe to come over and we all feel good to do that then yes absolutely i want to do some roads and boats uh with some etc get some art art caravans going and some mbas and some electricity uh do all kinds of weird etc stuff uh so when though i don't know it's going to really depend again on the quarantine and COVID-19 um, sanctions. So hopefully within the next couple of months, uh, but yes, it is something I wanna do. And then uh, it sounds a lot like Splatter in general, taking resources and antiquity, generating demand for food chain magnate, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, at high player counts, this this and antiquity, I think it especially wild. Um, Roads and boats and antiquity both have crazy, crazy chit counters, like a chit uh, density on maps. You end up stacking so much stuff. It ends up as a giant mess. These hexes, they're pretty small in Roads and Boats. Um, they're like smaller than your like Twilight Imperium if, if you guys have played it. Uh, they're, they're smaller than the Antiquity hexes too. They're pretty tiny. But that just leads to a messy, messy board where stuff pours over. I mean, even, even like here, right? You can see it can be hard to exactly... Um, like tell at times where stuff is uh you end up like crowding hexes especially with rivers like this is has like two sides to it you know this has two sides to it so i have to keep everything like on one side for right now uh, it, it can be a pain but you know you you try to manage um all right so anyway uh i've populated i've moved stuff i'm not building anything this round uh so we're just gonna stick another brick into the wonder. Um, okay, and now uh, back to population. Log pops out there. Brick pops out here. And uh, that is gonna be it. So let's have this donk take a step over to here. He, this turn, is gonna make a uh, paper mill. And paper, remember, is needed for research. Uh, then I'm gonna have this donkey go down to here he is going to make a uh, raft factory down here, and this guy will allow him to make a raft pretty quick. And uh, that's going to be it. Someone's going to have to then usher these geese up this way. You know what? Hold on a sec. Do I want to put? The, uh, you know what? I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna leave this guy here because I want to make a road to connect this first, so that the guy with the geese can move more quickly. And I, if if the paper mill gets made this turn. It's not going to really change much if it gets made next turn instead, because the goods required are um, the goods required are not going to be there till next turn or the turn after maybe. Uh, so he's just going to stay here. Okay, uh, let's go ahead then and move on to building, which is going to be just this guy. He's going to go ahead and build a nice cool raft factory right on that tile uh all right then that is going to be the only build oh no i'm going to make a road that's right i'm going to make a road as well so we've got three roads right now it's a decent little network though i'm going to need to connect this one too uh that's okay though then uh let's go into the wonder no one at my home tile. Just going to stick a game wonder brick in there. Uh, all right, population time. As you can probably see, this game can move pretty darn quick. Uh, these scenarios can really, really hum along. Uh, this is also when I'm going to make a transporter in the production phase. I've got the goods that I need, two sets of logs, and that is going to create a new transporter for me gonna make me a nice little raft so water transports can go in the water tiles but they can also go along the river every transport has a, uh, a, a limitation to how much they can carry and how far they can move the donkeys like I said they carry two things at once and they can move one on land or two spaces if there's a road and they have to stay on the road the whole time uh, rafts can carry three things and move three hexes. So this raft from here could go, you know, all, all the way up to here if you wanted uh, and all the way around. 
I don't know that he's going to be doing a ton of that, at least not right now. His, his first goal is going to be making uh, stuff out at sea. I actually need two rafts in order to make a, uh, an oil rig because rafts can only carry three things and oil rigs need four goods. So I need two rafts. Uh, all right, so that was production and now movement. So let's have this donkey go up to here. I'm going to go ahead and take these down to make another raft next turn. This guy is going to move back to the home tile with all these geese following him. Uh, do I need another raft yet? I mean, I will need one, but I need goods first. So that, so a big thing in this game is your order of operations. You know, I need my raft down here. I need the rafts to go out and build a um, an oil rig. To build the oil rig, I need three boards and a brick. If I get my rafts right away, they're just going to hang out because I, I need time to collect those resources. So a big part of getting points in this game is the order of operations you're doing things and trying to, to map out like a strategy, which I, I'm not doing a great job of right now. Uh, maybe, I mean, maybe I am, who knows? Uh, so this guy's here, he brought the geese. This guy uh, made the road last turn. This turn he's gonna go here and drop these goods off. And then he's gonna go back. I don't know that he's gonna build anything there yet because I wanna collect, I need to bring a brick down this way. Maybe I'll have the geese. Let me think here for a second. So if I have him stay here and build that this turn, next turn there will be two bricks here. This guy can go one, pick him up, two. Two bricks. I mean, I only need one brick to make my oil rig. I also need to get my mine shaft up because mines take a while to start populating things. So maybe my next goal is actually going to be I need to research and then make a mine shaft. I, I can, you know, I can make my mine, my mine shaft first. So I think instead, this guy, he will carry this stuff here. And, and he'll then go back. So he goes here. This guy can make the paper. And then someone else will have to carry it. I need it. Okay. Also, I could use another donkey, but I have nowhere to make those now. Whew, okay. It, it, this game is, the rules are pretty simple for the most part. But the way you put them together is sometimes maddening like it could really be a brain burner uh all right let's have him let's just have him do it he's up here to make a paper mill just make the dang paper mill uh this guy has these this guy's brought brought the geese up uh the raft got made i think we are cool so let's go ahead and end the turn with the wonder getting put in because i'm not building anything uh and let's populate Populate. This guy, let's have him carry these things. I'm actually gonna, I am gonna drop these off here this turn and then go back because he's gonna bring these down here to make another raft. This guy, he can stay here because he's gonna carry pa uh, the, the wood boards this, these make up to the paper mill because the paper mill uh, actually, yeah, this this should have gotten made last turn. Uh, the paper mill, that's why he stayed. He stayed there to make the paper mill. It should have popped up last turn. Uh, the paper mill needs uh, boards. It's two boards or logs to make one piece of paper. So if this dude carries some up here, he'll be able to make paper. He'll have the geese. Uh, it was mentioned earlier about if, if paper and geese are in the same spot together, they create a black hole and destroy all reality. That is true, but if there's a transporter with them, it does not. They just cannot be left by themselves. Uh, okay, so this guy's going to stay here. He, he will guard the geese uh, in a bit. This guy is moving up. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm confusing myself here on what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do too many things at once, which is what this game is. Trying to do a bunch of stuff at once. So let's have... Let's have this guy... <laughs> it's possible I've gotten ahead of myself. Also, that you're supposed to track where you are in a turn here, too. Um, that's what this thing is for. And I usually don't use it. 
uh, in a solitaire game for some reason. I feel like I need it more because I end up I end up backtracking a little more in a solitaire game. So this guy is hanging out up here. He's I think gonna he'll go back. This guy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're, I, I think I think I'm cool. So this dude is gonna wait here. This guy has the geese, and this guy carried that. I got a little. I'm a little lost on where I am in my turn. I apologize. Who I moved and who I haven't. Normally, I like to stand these guys up when I haven't acted with them and lay them down when I have. But for the purpose of this camera up here, I'm keeping them laid down so you guys can see them a little more easily. And it's kind of mixed me up a little. That's fine. I'm. I think I've moved my guys. If I haven't, then rest in peace. My chances of doing well. Uh, so let's let's repopulate this right now. I'm sure someone can correct me if I have if I screwed myself just now by not doing an extra move turn, but uh, it's something I'll notice afterwards. Anyway, so this is cutting up two sets of logs. One, two. Stick those boards there, and then stick another two boards because there were two sets of logs, and it can produce up to six boards in one turn. Uh, and that is going to be it. So this guy is now going to go one, two, up to here. All these geese following him, carrying two boards. That's what he did. This dude is going to go flip him upside down if you use. That's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good idea. Flip him upside down. Let's do that. So that guy's gone. This guy is going to go one, pick these two up, go two down to here. This guy is going to go one over to here with those, and he can leave them there right now. Um, okay, so these guys have all moved. This guy's gone. And this guy has gone as well. Uh, let's actually have him go here. There's there's actually some boards right there for right now. Let's um let's have him go here instead to make another raft. Get that out of the way. Uh, great. So my three donks have moved, and I'm gonna need only one of these to make an oil rig. So let's instead have this make a road this turn. Not instead. Let's have it make a road. It had no other plans. Over to there. Okay, uh, then that is the only building I'm going to do. Uh, it is now into the Wonder. I do have boards here, but I've got plans for them. Though I would love to get points here too. Let me think. If I spend these two, let's say I spend these two. Make a brick. What I'm going to need is three total boards to make my... You know, let's, let's do this for my oil rig I'm going to need three boards and a brick got to keep that in mind and I'm going to need two more boards to make a piece of paper so these are the things I need in my immediate future because uh, I have two boards up here already for the, for the first piece of paper for research. I have these two boards, which means I, could, I need one more board. And I actually have a brick, so I can even get rid of that brick. If I get rid of these two boards, I need to get three more. I need five more boards, which will take three sets of logs because I get two boards per log. This produces one a turn, so that means it would take three turns for me to get the requisite amount of boards for another piece of paper and for uh, and, and and for this. I think that's okay. Three turns, three, six, nine, twelve. It's a quarter of my game, roughly. Yeesh. Okay, let's, um, it's only 10 points, and I, 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 I think, maybe foolishly, I'm going to let the game 
put that in there. I'm going to keep these boards in the, in the interest of time. So I'm going to need to collect one more board here for that, because I'm keeping these two boards. Okay, so that's all gone. Uh, I'm not building to the wonder. It is now back to production. Flip these guys over to signify that I'm starting my turn anew. And to produce. Produce logs. Produce that. These two will make a piece of paper. Uh, once the uh, paper is created, two of these and the paper will immediately research. Goodbye paper, goodbye goose, two geese. And I'm going to research oil rigs because I got to make one. Uh, all right. And uh, that is all. Oh, and this will create another raft. So I've got the rafts that I need now. I've got the transporters I need. I've got the rafts I need. I've got the research for oil rigs. I will soon have the, the gear, the, the resources for oil, oil rigs. We'll be, we'll be good to go on that. And then we can work on making a mint, which I'm going to make up here. The mint is going to be needed for coins. And I'm going to make my mine here also very soon. Okay. Uh, then let's have this dude travel here. And pick these up. He's going to go get ready for a mine. A mine requires three boards and one, um, one brick. So I probably should have calculated that too, but I need for this guy, I'm going to need a few things. All right. It's going to be for this mine. I have, I guess I have the brick already. So I'm gonna need to go ahead and create, create some other stuff. Uh, so that guy moved to here, let's flip him over. This dude is going to travel down to here. Actually, you know what? These guys can just go pick up that material. He doesn't need to hold it. So he's gonna just do a little dance. He'll go back to here, pick these up, and then go right back there with it. This dude is gonna to move to the home tile as well. Then I'm going to have one of these rafts one step into the water. It started on the land. They, they can dock onto shores. One step onto the land or water, water, two steps into the home tile to pick up all these goods. And a third step into the water. So he just needs one more set of logs, which is what this guy's going to go get. Uh, this guy, everyone, every, everyone's done their business, which I know everyone has moved, so I'll still flip them. Okay. And then it's time to build into the wonder, which I'm also not going to do again. Now I, in the past when I've done this, when, when I, when I got more points, I'm doing, I'm kind of doing some stuff I haven't normally done here. Just I'm trying it out. Uh, I've built more into the wonder more aggressively, trying to get up to this irrigation mark. Uh, so that these can be built on. In fact, if, I'm, if I want stocks, I'm going to have to build um, on one of these. So I can already tell you, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get to stocks this, this game. But uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm coming up with some ideas for the future. Uh, anyway, so I have uh, done all my movement. I'm not building to the wonder. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's let's go ahead and uh, and continue. Okay, uh, these guys flip. This guy actually could have built a road, I guess. One, two. No, I'm gonna need those for a mint, though, or one of them, one for a mint. All right. Anyway. Anyway. Okay, populating. Populate that sucker. That sucker. And these turn into boards. Which is going to be enough. Then 
for that and that. Uh, and then let's have this dude go here, pick up a board, go into the ocean. We'll have this guy take one of these up to here, drop it off, and go back. This dude is going to step up into here, and this dude is going to go uh, here, pick these up, and come back with it. Now, in the building phase, I'm going to build an oil rig out here. Spend all these and make my oil rig. So now that's going to start making coal. Uh, that's all my movement. Nothing to do at home. Let's put this in. I really feel like this is what's stressing me out right now. I feel like I'm, I need more stuff out here. I'm getting behind in it. Uh, all right. And then let's go ahead and flip all these suckers over. Populate everything. These get cut into two boards. So I can hang out. Uh, you know what? I, I will. I will have this guy have made a road here on, on, the, on, on this turn. Uh, this creates this. This pops out a single coal. Okay, uh, then let's have... So if I want to make... I need to make a mine, so I'm going to need to carry these things up here. That's enough to make a mine this turn. Let's have this dude do another dance, go to here, and then go to here. And these will be brought up to make uh, paper for research. Flip him. And this guy can start working on making a mint out here. So for that, I'm going to need one stone, two boards. So let's get ready to carry some boards. We'll go one two out to here. Uh, and this guy, these guys can hang out. Oh, well, they don't really need to hang out. Why don't we have one, two, three. That'll pop out. This guy can go one, two, three. Yeah, let's have this guy go into the river. One, two, three. Uh, and this guy's gone. Cool. Yes, that looks good to me. Uh, building. Let's build a mine. So that's going to be three boards and a brick. Pops this mine out there. Now mines will produce gold and iron. They will do three of each and they alternate. Now I mentioned at the jump that there was a rule that I use from the solo game in all of my multiplayer games. And that is this one. Uh, normally... You throw these into a little bag, mix them up, and you pull one out at random every turn when this produces. In the solitaire game, you alternate from whichever there's more of, uh, and if it's tied, gold. So at the start you do, one gold comes out, now there's more iron, so next iron comes out. It's tied, so another gold comes out, now it's more iron, so iron. You do that until it's empty. Uh, so we can go ahead and just stack these up. Alternatingly, gold iron, gold iron. Oops, and set those on top of the mine, like that. Uh, so that's got built, and I am not building anything else this turn. Here, soon I'm going to start having to use this lumber to throw bricks in, but I don't know that's going to come soon enough. Uh, then this. Converts, we're done, we're done moving, we're done building, we're done with the wonder. This converts. This creates one of these. This pops out a gold. This pops out another one of these. This guy can carry both. And that pops out a brick. Okay. So we've got all these guys out. Let's go ahead and move. We need to get paper done up here. So this guy's going to take these two boards and go one, two. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, uh, it'll get me a little extra gold at this point to replenish this. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly behind. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, all right. So uh, this guy moves up here with this wood. And uh, this dude will move over to here. Drop this off. And now... I'll have this dude go one, two, over to here. Feel as though I maybe should have bred some donkeys before making this. I could, I could use one more, I think. Uh, and this guy needs coal up here. So we'll just follow the other dude. One, two, three. And one, two, three. We'll go over to here. He'll start carrying some bricks. This guy's also on that side. Uh, okay. That is all my movement. I am not building anything. And so we're just going to pop this in. Uh, great. Let's repopulate. This goes here. Here, this kicks out an iron. Uh, this is going to make paper, which is immediately going to eat up these geese. And I will research mine replenishment, even though I think, again, I think I'm a turn behind. Maybe two turns behind. I should I needed to make that mine a little earlier, because it's got six things in it, three of which is gold. If I replenish it, it's going to replenish it and start kicking out more stuff. So I wanted to get a total of six gold. Out. Uh, but it's one thing comes out per turn, it's going to take six turns to kill it. I've only got seven turns left, uh, but that's all right. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to keep convincing myself that everything is okay. Uh, Garrick, you said earlier that those are famous last words. I think I'm doing okay right now. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. You might very well be correct in that uh, that that uh, that assumption. So okay, uh, these guys. Uh, oh, it should be flipped over. We're all repopulating and uh, researching. So this guy's going to start moving on down. This also needs to flip over. And that needs to make another coal, though I'm not going to need it. Okay, so this guy's going to go one, two, three up to here. This guy's going to pick up, uh, let's say... He can pick up both of these bricks. I only need one over here, but I can make a road with it. So he's going to pick up these bricks and go one, two, to the end. This guy is going to carry these things. One, two. This dude's leaving his gold. And he's going to go one, two, back to here. And we're going to have... Sorry, I'm just flipping my stuff over. And we're going to have this dude go one, two, down to here. Uh, yes, I hope people that have watched my streams in the past know that I'm very bad at games. Uh, I'm trying to get better at some games, but you know, it's, it's an uphill battle. Very much so. Uh, and there's no dice in this game. How am I supposed to be able to, you know, roll, roll high and lucky uh, and do well? It's, I don't know that you can without dice. Next time I play this, I'll introduce dice. Uh, and that is going to be all my movement. I will build a road with one of these right here. You can also build ro roads over, uh, over rivers to create bridges, and that basically unifies the tile. I have done that in this in the past when I've, I've, I've done actually decently getting a bunch of donkeys and kind of bridging stuff, but I'm trying, I'm trying not doing that this time. Uh, so he's going to build that. This guy could make a road. There's already roads everywhere. No need for that. Uh, I think that's going to be the only building I do this turn. Everything else looks okay. And then it's wonder time, which again, is just going to be a, a pathetic nothing from me. And now it's production. Let's knock all these guys over. 
flip them to their other side. How, uh, uh for, I, I kind of ask this every time I, I do streams about splatter games, but like, I usually ask what kind of splatter games people like, because I feel like it's always a different list from people, right? People, some people love this, some people love Food Chain Magnate, some people love The Great Zimbabwe. Uh, they're all great, but w what game of theirs have people played the most? Uh, okay. All right, so this has to pop out. This goes here, this goes here. Uh, another one of these comes out for posterity, even though no one is going to go collect them. And then this guy is going to pick these up and bring them here. Uh, this guy is going to walk here. That's enough to make a mint, so I will do that. And then this guy is going to go here, pick up this gold. One, two, and no, he'll, st he'll do a dance back and forth here. Just drop the gold. Uh, this dude, however, is going to go one, two, all the way to the end. This stuff. Uh, that guy picked these up this turn, or that one up this turn, so he's going to go one, two, drop that off. This dude already brought those. Uh, so that is everything. And then it's Wonder. Or a build, rather. I have to build. Build this. Mint. And that is the only thing I'm building. It is then time for uh, the wonder that I was about to do before. Let's put that in. Then conversion time again. Everyone's favorite time in Roads and Boats. Conversion. One, two, three, four. That iron pops out. Uh, this has one coin. I need two coins to make a, or two, uh, two nuggets to make a coin, which I'm about to have. Flip all these guys over. Okay. All right. That. That, everything is cool. Everything looks great. Wow, Matthew played Greed Inc. the most. I think that is maybe other than like Beast and Druff and their their early early games, their VHS box games. Uh, I think Greed might be the the like their least played game. Uh, that or Duck Dealer of their of their big games. Uh, do you like? I mean, I guess you've played it. You've played it a bunch, Matthew. How is Greed? I, I know I've heard people compare it to, um, like, John Company a little bit. I know it's like a negotiation game. Uh, all right. So I have populated everything. Let's have this guy move here. Drop the gold coin off and go back. Let's have one of these boats go blah, 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 down to here. Uh, this other one can uh, he'll he'll go here so these have moved one two so the donkey and that guy will get up there at the same time i'm gonna need now let's see so i don't need this paper i did that research is done my mint is done Whew, okay so i'm gonna use these i think to start adding into the wonder I don't need any more wood to make buildings that I want. If somehow I get to build a stock exchange here, when this gets to irrigation, I only need stone for that. So all of this is going to have to start getting spent. You know, let's have this guy go all the way. I think I can start putting this into my home tile to spend, to put stuff here uh, in hopes of getting irrigation. So let's, this guy can hang 
Another trick too is my guys need to be holding the stuff that I get points for, so I need to make sure I have these coins and the, the gold nuggets and stuff on people. Uh, yeah, it's got a scout move. He'll go back to here. And then this guy can go here. Just do, do that dance. Do the log dance. And then it is one, or building time. I am not building anything this turn. My whole network here is connected by roads. Uh, so I'm going to build into the wonder. I'm going to build one, two. I'm build, I could build three if I use that log. Four turns left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I build one every turn. So one, two. I need to build three more to get to irrigation. By then. No, let's, let's just build one and save those logs. I know I'm on a time crunch here, but let's do that and stick a game piece in. And then it's time to repopulate. There, this gold pops out. And this is enough to make a coin. The, uh, the gold nuggets and this combine to make a single solitary 40 point coin. Uh, and then we get one of these two. All right. Everything resets for my movement. This has to convert as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get my hands on Greed Inc. Uh, I, I have a friend that has it actually. Brett, who's been on the stream, has Greed. So I'll, I'm sure at some point when things kind of go back to normal, we'll we'll try playing Greed on stream too. Uh, I part of the like destroying uh, the company and John Company I think is when people compare it to Greed Inc. But I don't know if it if it otherwise is similar. Uh, all right, let's have this dude. Carry two of these. One, two. And I know I'm being a little discriminatory here. I'm calling all these guys he's. I apologize. Let's have uh, this guy continue to dance around. This dude is going to go one, two, three to here. There will be four of those there next turn. Actually, this guy's going to go one, two. He's going to carry two of these over to here. This guy's already moved. This guy has moved. That guy's the only one now. So if this dude goes one, two to here, he'll collect this gold and then replenish it with iron. So he needs coal for that too, I guess. So this guy, I'll have to bring some coal to him. That's fine, then. We can do that. Uh, all right. So let's do building. I'm going to dream big because that's the only way to dream. And I think I'm going to have to make a... Well, do I need to make a road? If we're going here, let's make a road. Let's do it. So make a road, and this is this is this is going to be the beginnings of my uh, economic trade network, my big economic trade network. That civilizations in the future will come across remnants of my society, and they'll wonder why there was a road going into a desert, uh, but they'll never know that we were trying to turn the desert into a fertile, prosperous, workable land. And that we didn't. But there will be signs that we were making our way to that. That's all that counts. 
I'll put this into the Roads and Boats Legacy logbook. And uh, that is going to be it for my building. It is now uh, Wonder Time, and I'm going to build a couple of Wonder Bricks. So I've got... That's enough for one Wonder Brick. And that's enough for a second Wonder Brick. So let's go ahead and build two. And the game puts that one in. So we've got two turns remaining. <laughs> uh, I have very few points right now, but that's all right. Uh, then uh, we'll populate. This out, put this out. Uh, yeah, I have. I, I did see on a, a heavy cardboard um, stream the other day. I saw Yarun said that they were they were gonna probably do a Great Zimbabwe reprint at some point soon. Um, like I'm guessing in the next year or so, and uh, kind of as an intermediary to a new game, which hopefully they'll have a new game. Uh, out at some point. I know they've been working on one for a while. I think they scrapped it somewhere along the line. But uh, yeah, I'd love to see a new Splatter game at some point, and I would love to see more people get Great Zimbabwe. That goes down. Okay. Uh, all right, let's have this guy go. One, two. Grab these. Grab three of them. Go three. Dropping them off in the home tile. Uh, this dude's just gonna do his regular dance back and forth. Uh, this guy will drop this off here and then go one, one, two. Actually, you know what? No, he's gonna go from here. He's gonna go. Yeah, yeah, he's just gonna do that. Just do another dance back and forth to bring that over. This guy is going to go one, two over to here. This guy, I can leave that and go one, two back this way. And those are all my guys moving. Building time, not. And then do a, uh, a wonder phase. So I'm going to build one. Two more into there. Uh, okay, and then, so these are all spent. And uh, then the game puts their penultimate brick in. <laughs> and uh, reach, new goal is reach my personal, my previous personal best. That I don't think that's going to happen. Um, in fact, I could probably quit here and end up the same score as in a turn. Uh, because I only have one extra gold bit here. So we'll we'll play it out just for the sake of it, but we'll we'll do it quickly. So these guys all flip over. My mistake this game was not not getting my mine up early enough, I think was my biggest mistake. I think I needed to get that up a few turns earlier so that I could have replenished it and carried more stuff over here. Then at least I would have gotten a second coin, which would have gotten me much closer to my personal previous bests. Uh, all right, so let's replenish everything. Pop this out. And that's it. So this dude is gonna Carry this to here and pick up the coin because I'm going to need it to score the points. And uh, this guy is going to walk this over here so I can replenish that mine in theory. Again, future civilizations. This guy will go down the road. One, two, three. And uh, this guy goes out to the water, picks these up, and then comes back into here. Uh, and that's basically going to be it. That's basically all my movements. I mean, I think I have another, but I'm not going to worry about it. 
Uh, you know what? He's going to build. On this build turn, he's going to build a bridge uh, just to, to confound archaeologists further. Basically, unexplored forest out in here and a weak old bridge crossing this river, insinuating that peoples had traveled this way. And yet, within this inner forest, there's no sign of life. And that is going to confound archaeologists for centuries. Almost as much as it's gonna as, as this bridge into the desert is gonna confound them. Uh, it'll make it seem like these peoples, uh, maybe they ended their lives because also these bridges, the, the this bridge and this road, uh, they are the last things made by this civilization, which means they will have a uh, a later carbon date than our other constructions. And so th when when this is discovered later, they will see that these bridges were built in the late era of the civilization, but they lead to nothing. They lead to a barren desert and a, an uninhabitable forest, right? And what that suggests is that these peoples, the conspiracy theories, cryptozoology um, fanatics, will theorize that these peoples wandered into the desert and the forest and was somehow absorbed into the essence of the earth in this desert and in this forest. That is what people are going to assume in the future. Uh, in the present time, however, we are going to have to go ahead and uh, add some bricks to the wonder. And so we are, just, just for posterity, we are going to add two more of our bricks into the wonder. Basically, the thing we should have been doing much earlier. Uh, the land does get irrigated, actually. So never mind my, de my barren desert theory. Uh, and that is going to be the end of the game. So... My point total here is going to be very paltry. I'm getting only these two are going to score. I'm getting 40 points for this, 10 points for gold, and I'm going to get 10, 20, 30 points for here, making the total sum of 40 plus 10 is 50 plus 30 is a nice cool 80 points uh and that is the end of this roads and boats game so i scored a nice cool 80 points which the i've been trying to put chat on screen i don't know if i'm on the fence if i like the chat on the stream you guys can let me know is it even too can you read it is it big enough i don't know but uh i have a nice cool 80 points which if you've never played this game that means i beat you because you have a score of zero if you have played this game i you've probably beaten me <laughs> because 80 is the worst i've ever done in this uh typically what i've done in the past is i've gotten more donkeys and i have kind of i have played for irrigation so i've been i'd spend a lot of time loading up on these uh to get into irrigation to build stuff out here um i've tried to Instead of going for replenishing mines, I've tried going for specialized mines, which make it so they only pump out gold, and I've tried putting one in each of these. That's done me okay. Uh, I've avoided looking at solutions or tips and strategies for this because I feel like the, the fun is figuring it out yourself, right? Uh, so, um, cool. I got 80 points. <laughs> uh, that is all about almost a little more than half of one stock, which I did not make it to. Um, I, yeah, I feel like my biggest thing was I didn't get my mine out early enough. If I had gotten the mine out earlier and I replenished it, I would have had enough for a second coin, um, which would have been good. And I, also, I guess I also would have needed to get to irrigation. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I feel like I want to play this again uh, soon. I I may even play it later tonight, not on stream, but I have everything out here. It's actually pretty easy to set up. So I um I was considering if I play through this fast enough, I might just run it back right away and do a second game of this on the stream. Uh, I kind of like the idea in general of of doing multiple games in one sitting. So maybe in a future stream, I will uh. I will try that. I will try, you know, playing through something. Maybe, okay, here's maybe what I'll do. Maybe I will do this game, this map again on stream, maybe like next week or something. Uh, and we'll see if we can get to the 260 goal. We'll play quicker. I will not narrate my turns quite as heavily. 
uh, I will make sure, you know, I'll move quick. Because honestly, like I said, I, you can play this in like 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. It'd be, I think, pretty easy to knock out a couple of games uh, in one sitting. This took, this took a little over an hour. But um, yeah, well, I don't, I'll, I'll consider that. Uh, but anyways, that was me badly playing Solitaire Roads and Boats. I do like Roads and Boats a lot. Uh, it's a very cool game. It really makes you think. It, like, it gets your brain going uh, quite a bit. But maybe, to me, maybe more so than any of Splatter's games, the, the, the way the logistics play out in this game really, really melt my skull. And in a good way, though. In a good way. Uh, and also having like a piece of plastic and uh, a wet erase marker. I liked being able to take notes. I didn't do that as much this time. Sometimes I take notes on the back of these sheets or annotate stuff on here on these laminated player aids uh, to kind of remind myself of what I'm trying to do. Because a big thing in this game is, again, order of operations. Turn one, do this. Turn two, do this. Turn three, do this. And, you know, try to plan that out. So I... Um, I was flying, I was flying by the seat of my pants a bit, but maybe I'll come back to it in the very near future. Like maybe next, like I said, maybe next week. Um, I, the only other thing I have right now on the phasing player schedule, I have two things. I have the third part of my Matt Eklund interview in which we largely talk about PAX transhumanity. That should be coming out, I think Friday is when I'm planning on putting that up. Uh, if you have not checked out my interview with Matt Eklund, by all means, go do so. Uh, I have both parts on YouTube and I also have them on SoundCloud soundcloud.com slash phasing player. Um, you can grab an RSS feed and put it in your favorite podcast app. Um, but I, yeah, it, it, he's a smart guy, cool guy. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to get Kriegbot on the channel, uh, a game of his. I've played PAX Transhumanity on the stream. So uh, yeah, definitely go check out the interview with Matt Eklund and Nate Hayden is another one I've done if, if you're interested. So the third part of that is coming this week. Uh, I also have, um, not not tomorrow, but the day after, Thursday, I'm going to play Dungeon Degenerates uh, on stream, which is a little bit different from games I have done before. It is way more Ameritrashy <laughs> than, uh, than stuff like Roads and Boats or the PAX games or, you know, whatever else. Um, the, uh, it's, it's like a, a campaign-based adventure game with wild art. Uh, if... if I'm, you know, I'm feeling it. If people are, are, are into it, I'm kind of thinking of starting a campaign to play like once every other week or even once a week or something of Dungeon Degenerates, continue on with the missions. And um, I think it could be cool. It, it, you know, I, I like the game. It's fun. It's a fun game. Uh, so that's Thursday. I'm playing Dungeon Degenerates. And um, then, yeah, then the, the Eklund interview and maybe next week I'll run Roads and Boats back. Uh, yeah, uh, but if, you know, if you guys liked it, if, if this is your first time checking out the channel or you've, you've watched it before, but you haven't subscribed, by all means subscribe, um, on here or SoundCloud if you're listening to my audio stuff there. And if you really like the channel, if you, if you really like me, uh, coming up with anthropological reasons for why I'm doing so badly in a game or justifying my, my poor play, um, consider a, a donation. Go to phasingplayer.com slash donate. And thank you to everyone that has donated. It's super, super kind of you, especially in wild times like we're living right now. So uh, the the money, the, the, the support getting thrown my way is super kind, and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, anyway, that's going to be it for me right now. Uh, I will be back, like I said, in a couple of days for Dungeon Degenerates, which I was stumbling over my words earlier in this stream. I had, you know, a bit of a dry mouth. Uh, dungeon degenerates is a hard thing to say. I, I have to like slow down every time I go to say it. Otherwise I'd very much stumble over my words, say like dungeon degenerates or whatever else. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, thanks a lot guys. Take care. And, uh, hopefully I'll see most of you guys on Thursday, same time, Thursday, 2 PM. I'm going to click the splash screen button so it doesn't do a hard cut. And then I'm going to go off the air. So Adios. Let's throw the hat. I haven't done that in a while.